Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Coming up on today's show, we're going to have another of our Out of Bounds segments as newlywed Leela Mackey, member of the Philadelphia section of the PGA, and Chris Nowak pay a visit to Scotland Run. They're going to go over some putting drills, also take a look at the halfway house at the club in Williamstown. Also, our teed off panel will join us again from Lulu, and we'll close our show today with a special remembrance of a very special friend, the golfers in the Philadelphia area, and in particular, viewers of Inside Golf. That's all coming up next here on Inside Golf. The 24th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 50 courses, over 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee, Greater Philadelphia. Building game changers. The first tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. Buy Gap, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf, and celebrating their centennial year. Take time to thank your local men and women PGA professionals. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. Golf. And let's join our team at Scotland Run in Williamstown, New Jersey. Welcome to our Out of Bounds segment. I'm Leela Mackey and I'm here with my co-host Chris Nowak. Well, I thank you for having me and congratulations. Thank you. We're married. Yeah. Not you and I, but you <laughs> now, right? I am. I am. It was great. Thank awesome. you so much. Awesome. Well, now that I have you back, let's talk putting. Yes. Okay. We're here at Scotland Run Golf Club in New Jersey. And we're looking forward to kind of exploring this course. And yeah, um, yeah let's do some putting. Let's do some putting. All right, so uh, let me ask you this. What's the first thing you walk up, you see your ball in the green, what's the first thing you're looking at? I am first off giving myself a mental high five because I made it on the green. And, I like that. And you know, that's rare. So the first thing I'm looking at is how far away am I? Do I want to be below the hole? Do I want to be, is it okay to go a little long? You know, you're just really trying to get it into that hula hoop around the hole so that you can ideally make the next putt. Next putt. And then I'm looking at break, obviously. Is there water around? Usually a general rule of thumb. It doesn't always apply, but if there's water around, it's going to usually break towards the water. Okay. Um, however, that doesn't always apply. But so, and then I'm looking, are we going with the grain or against the grain? Okay. So when you're looking at speed and just lag putting, that's kind of what you're looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my approach is I believe in aim, aim small, miss small. So I don't believe in the hula hoop theory. I'm, I'm aiming dead at the hole. Um, when, you know, I'm all in. Yeah. It, it, I it, like that. You know, but it can cost you. Yeah. You can three play, <laughs> especially if you're aggressive. So I understand that thought process. So I would like to go over maybe today, if we can just maybe take a few putts, kind of tell me what you're looking at and what you're thinking about when you're putting. Sure. Okay. So when I walk up to this putt, I'm looking at the break, I think it's, it honestly looks fairly straight to me. I would also look at it from both sides um, of the hole. That helps a lot, okay. <laughs> I've right. noticed. For this purpose, I'm not walking all the way down me there today. Neither, okay. but, all right. uh, so, and then I really pick a point on the ground. So I'm gonna look, you know, 
I'm going to aim kind of right over this. So, right so you're here. looking for a spot more closer to your ball to start a path? That's how I am because okay. I'm actually, I'm not really uh, left eye dominant, I'm more right eye dominant. Okay. And for some reason, it just, I can't do it like, I can't picture a line and get my, my club set up right. to where I want to aim. So for me, I need to pick a point pretty close to my ball in order to, to I'm aim. complete opposite. Yeah. I am complete opposite. I'm looking down at the hole where I, where the line, and I pick something out around the hole. Because obviously, very seldom you have a straight putt. Yeah. So I'll look for maybe a different shade in the green, a divot mark, uh, something like that. And that's my aim and point. So it's interesting. Let's see what happens. It's all like feel, honestly. And I've just switched from a blade putter to a mallet putter just because my blade putter wasn't working for me anymore. So, and mallet putters really more take it straight back, straight through okay. stroke versus a blade putter when you're kind of doing right, a pendulum kinda. open yeah. and right. shut. Oh, they're looking good, looking good. Oh, I'm going to leave it. Maybe just right edge is what I'm looking at. Nothing's coming back. All right, I totally misread that green, but I'm still comfortable two putt. Yeah, that's you know? a good distance. So when you warm up, do you start close or do you hit long bombs for putts? What's What do you do putting-wise? Usually I try and start somewhat close um, and then do uh, some lag putting for sure. And then I end, I always like to end with a couple of short, short putts. putts. Just okay, to just to hear, feel, feel that. that you've made, made a three foot putt. And you hear you the noise, right? The, yeah, <laughs> before you start the. All round. right, so what, what do you usually do? Like right about? Yeah, I'll usually is do that how you like right here. Okay. And then, whoops, just make sure that You feel confident. A little the aggressive foot. there, Layla. I usually start two to three feet, make two, and just keep dropping back and back and back. Yeah. And then I like to finish with a bomb just to try. I mean, I'm not I'm not getting close to the pin on most of my shots. Yeah. So I do need to work on lag putting. Yeah. So one of our viewers, they're out there watching. What's the one thing you think you should would help them in their putting game this season just getting out there? Probably just practicing, honestly. I never practice putting, and it's one thing that uh, it shows, it shows. <laughs> so I think just practicing, practicing putting, practicing with intention, three foot putts, practicing 10 foot putts, and then, um, you know, lag putting. Maybe see a PGA professional too about Always putting? see a PGA professional. Actually, people that go to see a PGA professional and get like a putting lesson have said it has changed their whole game. So right. I will say, go to see a PGA professional. Right. And where are we off to next, Chris? Um, you know what? I heard they got a great halfway house here, and it's an official halfway house, as we discussed before. Perfect. Something between the ninth and the tenth hole. So let's go there. Let's see what they drink, what they like to drink here, with their favorite sandwiches and whatnot. And let's let's see what's going on at the halfway house. Sound good? Love it. That was a good hole. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> halfway house. <laughs> halfway Best house. Part. All right. So here we are. Halfway house. Yes. Again, it can only be called a halfway house if it's between nine and ten. Right. And here we are. I heard Alexis. Makes phenomenal drinks here. I heard real good. I'm looking forward to it. And this is a good halfway house. They got some picnic tables with some cover. I like it. All right, let's see what she's got. Hi. Hi, yeah. Alexis. How, How are you doing? How are you both? Good, thank you. What's your signature drink? What do you do well, here? Well, this is my signature drink, the Tito's Tropical Tornado. But then we also sell plenty of transfusions. Well, Now, sure. the transfusion is grape juice, um, ginger ale, and Tito's vodka. And then for my signature drink, it's pineapple, mango, lime juice, and Sprite. I will take your signature drink. Okay. I'll take the transfusion. Okay. All right. Now this is this is a halfway house. I like it. I, I like love it. a transfusion. Scotland oh runs doing it right with their halfway house. <laughs> Absolutely. Here is the signature. There's the transfusion. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. You're Cheers. welcome. Let's taste a little bit here. Mm. Oh, this is good. This is, this good is real good. Go right. This is really good. <laughs> this could be problems, right? Yeah. This this will wreck it's me. It's very popular. Yeah. Okay. So if we're talking popular. <laughs> What's your most popular shot here? Well, it would be Fireball. We'll take two of those. Okay. And then, have it right here. There you go. All right. Cheers. I'm a little nervous about this. Nah. <laughs> no need to be nervous. Not your first rodeo, is it? No. <laughs> it might be my last. Right. Cheers. Here's, here's Cheers. to being happily married. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, it's not bad. Actually. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it in a little container. Yeah. 
A lot so, of people do. Obviously, you need something for the stomach when you're drinking at the halfway okay. house. What What do you like to make? What's your favorite thing to make? My here? favorite thing to make it would be the wrap. The a wrap. chicken salad wrap, a turkey wrap. I love making wraps, but the hot dogs are the most popular food item, but I do love making sandwiches. You do? Mm -hmm. I yep. love a hot dog. I love a hot dog, too. Mm -hmm. hot, hot dogs are phenomenal. Um, is there anything like odd requests you get when sometimes when members come up that you, you know you're just like, where did that come from? Drink wise, food wise, things like that. Um, not really. I mean, sometimes I'll be asked to make a vegetarian wrap, and I have no problem do that doing that. I chop up the lettuce. I even make salads for them. Yeah, so I mean, nothing too out of the ordinary. Okay. Thank you so, so much. much. Always Thank remember you. to tip your halfway house, house, house in your cart, girl. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. No, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Off to the next hole. Off to the next hole. Stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf from Scotland Run as Leela and Chris will be joined by the pro, Brian Hecker, and one of the members, Steve Parizano. That's next on Inside Golf. And that I wouldn't have to pay it if I lost. There is more to the ultimate driving machine than you might think. Multiple forces converging to create something uncontainable. Introducing the ultimate first of its kind machine. The ultimate hair raising machine. And the ultimate peace of mind machine. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Hurry and release a 2021 BMW 330i xDrive sedan for $439 per month. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Well, as you've seen, we've already done a little bit of talking about Scotland Run in Williamstown, New Jersey. And we're back with Leela and Chris to take a look at a very interesting par three. It's the 13th hole. Okay, we're here on the par three, number 13. Yes, and tell us a little bit about the club. Tell us a little bit about how long you've been here and what you guys are all about here yeah. at Scotland Run. So we came into existence in 1999. I've been here, um, this is my 11th season here, my 10th calendar year. Uh, I started on the bag drop and on the driving range. Um, great club, we're surrounded by local to Philadelphia. We have uh, kind of unique, we have our old owner had a Cessna plane out on the 16th hole. There's a skydiving academy behind us. So we're kind of unique in that way where there's a lot of plane uh, emblems around the course, but pretty cool course to play in South Jersey. I noticed you guys have all those sun panels too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the solar panels went in. Uh, I don't know if it was 2013 or 2014, saves a lot of money on the electric bills. That's awesome. Yeah. Al Gore would be happy about that too. Yes. Um, so tell us how we got here. I heard a member reached out to you to challenge you. Yeah, uh, shout out to Steve Parasano, full member here, uh, great guy. He said uh, he introduced us, obviously, and, right. and now we're here. This is for a great Did cause, obviously. 20 bucks a guy? Yeah, he, he said 100, Scramble. and that I wouldn't have to pay you, it if I lost. Okay, well, hey, I'm in. All right, you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Um, if you want us to come play your par three for a little cash, reach out to us at Inside Golf. Steve, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Brian said you're responsible for the uh, the vig on this, so it's kind of why I showed up, Chris. I figured it's, if I'm going to be responsible to pay the vig, you I might as well have some swing. Swing, right? right. All right uh, we you. we have a tradition on out of bounds, and that's to have a beer before we play any par three. And as a member, it's mandatory. So, you ready? Yes, Bottoms okay. up, boys. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Good luck. Cheers. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look oh, again, it's oh, looking oh. good. Oh, damn, that was a real good shot. Oh, it's rolling in. It's rolling close. Good shot. Oh, All right, did everybody, game. like, warm up for an hour on the range before they came here, or what? All right, we're on. We're putting, but... You're dancing. Leela. Oh. oh. No, that's not all over it. Hold a little bit. That's all right, we're putting. We're putting. Right. Whoa, a little trash talking, a little early for that, ain't it? So just a little tidbit for all you golfers out there. If you don't fix your ball marks, it's very rude and unappreciated. So if you will fix yours and one other one, that's the general rule of thumb, make sure you fix your ball marks. If you want to play good golf courses, Fixing your ball marks goes a long way with keeping the course conditions, so please do so. Thank you. Well said. All right, looks like we got some work here. I, I, it's, it's almost dead on. I know. Yeah. 
I like that on. Oh, that's looking good. Looking good, partner. Looking good. All right, I like that. That's go, go. Wow. Get in. Wow. Now you gotta give us that, right? We're not gonna we gotta debate that, that or what? Just because I'm so in shock, I'll give you that. Alright. Now look. Ah, it came up a little short. You know, Alright, for the win. Here. What do we think? Left edge? Yeah, please. <laughs> He's our caddy, not yours. Oh, it goes right oh. all the way. Oh. So alright. So we have we we have a couple options here, and we'll leave it up to you, Brian. Okay. We can either go at the plane. All right. Or. Or we can come back and film another uh, par three. You make the call. Ooh. Uh, it sounds like you have a tradition here at Scotland Run when you're trying to settle bets or just trying to even stuff out. Tell, tell us a little about. You what got we're that about. right, Chris. So this is our 16th. This is our signature hole. It's called the Quarry Hole, and down in it, something very unique. We got an old plane. And every time somebody's, if there's a slow play or a backup, or if not, a bet needs to be settled, we come right here, we settle that bet by trying to hit the plane. It's not as easy as it looks. Okay, what do we got for yardage? One, two, zero, 120. All right, let's do it. Ooh. Uh, catch it. it mm. And that's not gonna make it. Nope. Oh, that's got to be good. That's got to go in. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's awesome. As always. Thank welcome you. back. Uh, yes, thank Look you. Look forward thank to you, more segments. Uh, Steve, thanks for reaching out and having us here at your home course. If you want us to come out, challenge you into par three, Check out your snack house, drink a few beers, reach out to us in Inside Golf. Well, nice shot, Leela. Bullseye to finish up your round at Scotland Run. All right, stay with us. More to come. Next up, our teed off panel from Lulu. Unbelievable resume and, and spent the next 15 years with me just taking great care of me. And, and really, I would call a mentor around my golf if you get past my father and some of the guys around Huntington Valley. And welcome back. Inside Golf continues. It's time for our teed off panel assembled here at Lulu Country Club on the deck overlooking the 18th hole in Upper Dublin. And joining us today, Matt Fry. He's back with us as Director of Communications, Philadelphia section of the PGA. Good to see you, Matt. Thanks for having me here. Oscar Mestri's here. He is the president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Oscar, always a pleasure. Great to see you, Harry. And Thank a local you. member from uh, Lulu, Jim Sullivan. His team recently was crowned the championship team in the Gap Club matches. So, yeah. Sully, well done. Thanks, Captain Harry. Sullivan. Yeah, that's right. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Sully, I'll, I'll start with you. The topic is this, by the way, folks, is the centennial year for the Philadelphia section of the PGA of America, 1921-2021, all year long here in Inside Golf. We're going to be talking about it what's happened over the past 100 years. A great celebration. Uh, Jimmy, you haven't been around for 100 years, obviously. Just kidding. Feels like it. But uh, you've come in contact. You've been playing since goodness sure. knows when with some of the great members of the Philadelphia section of the PGA. Yeah. So give me one, two, three, whatever, guys who have helped you, influenced you, been a mentor, be a support guy. Yeah. Give me a couple names. You know, so growing up as a, as a little kid at Huntington Valley, Jack Conley was there and was was the guy. You know, so that's obviously extremely fortunate to have been around Jack and get to benefit from his experiences and, and personality. I mean, caddying for him, you know, a bunch of times. Great guy and, and very fortunate for me. In, in my mid-teens, um, I was looking to improve my golf, and my father made a phone call to Jay Siegel, mentioned in some other circles, great player asking who's the instructor if we're, if we're going to send Jimmy to, to work on his game a little bit he's interested he wants to work at it 
he said it has to be Rick Osberg. It's a pretty strong endorsement. Really? And, and Rick, going back to, this is 1990 or 91, one of the leading players in the city and, and ran a, just did a phenomenal job. And as a teacher, has an un, unbelievable resume and, and spent the next 15 years with me, just taking great care of me. And, and really, I would call a mentor around my golf if you get past my father and some of the guys around Huntington Valley. Another thing, sort of family connections, Ronnie Rolfe at North Hills was just a wonderful family friend. My, my dad's parents were members at North Hills, and I think they may have hired, you know, been involved in hiring Ronnie when he was starting there, and he was a lifelong friend of, and, of the family. And, and prior to Ron was Bob Ross at Huntington Valley, who's, a, I think, a PGA of America legend. He spent some time in the section at North Hills in Philly Cricket, and, and at, you know, kind of at, at more parents and grandparents type age. But those are the four guys that really have made a lasting impact on me around the PGA of America. Yeah, Bob, Ronnie Rolf was a good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, I know Bob Ross for years from North Hills. He was a golf pro's pro. Yeah. That's how I describe yeah. Bob Ross. Oscar? Well, you know, I mean, in, in staying with the uh, with the theory that, you know, your local club, you know, your, your, your local head pros usually has the, the greatest effect on you. I'm going to go back to uh, the first head pro I ever had uh, at Overbrook, Harlan Will. Harlan Will, uh, till uh, till uh, just recently, held uh, held the course record at Overbrook, and I always used to get a kick out of, uh, you know, being with Harlan Will because in his latter years, when he'd be sitting in the men's grill, somebody would walk up to him and say, "Hey, Harlan, when you shot 62, the trees were this tall. I mean, how hard could that have been?" And then he said, "Hey, you know, when you're shooting 62, the trees don't come into play." <laughs> so, uh, you know, great, great, uh, you know, mentor. I mean, he, you know, I actually uh, won, a, won a, a section event, uh, the Pro Junior, with him uh, pr 110 years ago, <laughs> before the official count started with the Section PGA. Uh, and you know, currently, I mean, Eric Kennedy. Er Eric Kennedy came in in 2008, and I quickly won the club championship uh, because of him. So, you know, I'll give him a little shout out. He, uh, he along with Ray Thompson, uh, the late Ray Thompson and I played a lot of Saturday golf together. So he's, uh, he's had a, an, an effect without trying to have an effect on my game. He's had a positive effect. Good Matt, I know you've been involved with the section not as long as these guys have. But uh, maybe from your past and also from the section since you've moved around a little bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not from the Philadelphia area originally. I'm from Cincinnati, but I've lived here for uh, almost nine years. So I would say from a different perspective, I'm really into golf history. So somebody who's been on your program several times, Mr. Pete Trenum, mm. is just a great resource. And he has kept such detailed records for our section as our section historian. We have probably the best records of any of the 41 sections across the country. It's phenomenal and it's been such a help for us when we celebrate our centennial. Um, other couple mentions is Art Wall. Art Wall is the last club professional to win a major championship. He won the 1959 Masters, beat uh, Kerry Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer, which is uh, not two guys you can shake a stick at. So, uh, And one guy that probably not a people recognize, a, a gentleman by the name of Dewey Brown, he was actually the first black PJ professional in the country. Uh, way back in the t 1910s and 20s, uh, he was the, the, the club pro at, at a few different clubs here in the area and, uh, and went on to uh, own and operate his own golf course up in the Adirondacks. How about that? Yeah. You know, you talk about Pete Trenum. Uh, everybody who's seen Inside Golf, I think, is familiar with Pete and what he means to the section from an historical standpoint, just a very nice guy. And a, a little sidebar, I always try to throw these little, you know, <laughs> tidbits Nuggets. in there, much like people do. Uh, Pete Trenum was a college golf teammate at the University of Florida with Doug Sanders, mm. okay? Wow. And he said he hardly saw him, never went to class. He was talking about Sanders. <laughs> he was out hustling guys and then playing in team matches. But that's sort of like uh, the uh, frickin' frack, that's I think, nice. of golf. Pete yeah. Trenum, Doug Sanders. <laughs> but great. Pete, we love you, man. Congratulations. Matt, thank you. Congratulations. Look forward to doing a lot more this year, the centennial year of the Philadelphia section of the PGA. Back with more of Inside Golf in just a moment. For over two decades, First Tee has created experiences that build character. We believe every kid deserves to feel supported, safe to try something new, and to be prepared for what comes next. We develop their swing, but more importantly, their inner strength. Because we know what's inside doesn't just count, it changes the game. 
Come join us at First Tee. They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home. The places with a pick-me-up or a story that inspires, where you can share a taste of comfort with a personal touch that makes our world shine a little brighter. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local. Make it Main Street. Make it Monco. We end our show this week on a sad note. Philadelphia golf, and in particular, inside golf, lost a very special friend this week with the passing of Bob Shepard. Bob was born into a golf family. His father, Len, worked at one time for the great Walter Hagen. Himself was a head pro at Sandy Run, as was Bob later in his career. But Bob Shepard touched more than just the members at Sandy Run. He was an author of three books, various short stories about the game he loved, and also gave lessons to literally thousands of golfers, not just in Philadelphia, but around the world. He loved to travel, loved to go to Scotland. One time he told me he spent three hours getting a lesson from Seve Ballesteros at Royal Troon. Yeah, that was Bob Shepard. He was some guy, and we're going to miss you, Shep. But thanks for all the memories, and Godspeed, my friend, as you make it to that next tee box. That's it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. The 24th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Montco Golf. 50 courses, over 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee, Greater Philadelphia. Building game changers. The first tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By Gap, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf, and celebrating their centennial year. Take time to thank your local men and women PGA professionals.